Hi there. My name is Fred Carnot. Today I'm just going to give you a quick overview of all the options that are available for retractable landing gear in model airplanes. And there, these have been around for a long time. Uh, there's all sorts. There's mechanical, uh, mechanical, which are the, these two, uh, air-powered systems, and now electric-powered systems. Uh, this one here is an old style. Um, I don't know if this is even available anymore, but that was this um, little lever there was operated by a servo to retract the gear. Um, Spring Air did a set of retracts that had the 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 retract units. It had an air tank. The it, um, it had the air tank, had the filler valve, had the had the valves that were controlled by a servo. But what was unique about spring air was it was air up, and then the spring. When you let go of the air, the spring would bring the gear down. That's why I called sp spring air. So if you lost um, if you lost your your air pressure. The gear would come down, so that's why there's only one attached line going to the air cylinder. So you can see there's a fair amount of fair amount of hardware, and what's not shown here is the servo to operate the valve. So that's one system. Mechanical landing gear is you have this guy here, which is a, just a push rod, and a servo would activate it. You pull and push it with the servo and the gear comes up and down. So some people like that better than air because you weren't prone to air leaks. The same unit, and this is a same basic housing from Robart, it has an air cylinder with two air intakes. One did the retract and one did the extend. So if you lost your air pressure, your gear might be stuck up or down. So that's the air system. And you need a different valve if you have if you have this unit, you have to have a different valve as compared to the spring air. Now there's even retractable tail wheels. And these guys are servo activated. They're from Robart. This is a small one, but you just put a servo to this extend, retract the tail wheel. This guy is for large scale and then it does the same thing. It just has a push rod. It has a push rod that comes off here, controls this. This is a this is about an inch, inch and a half uh, wheel so this is for a fairly big airplane. But what's new on the scene, and which people like better, because most people are flying with a, a, a radio system, is the electric retracts. And what they've done is they've put an electric power jack screw into the um, unit. So you, you plug it into the receiver just like you would a servo, and it behaves like a servo. And you can get different sizes. Um, if you have two two units, you have to have a um, you have to have a Y harness. The Y harness comes off of the channel for the landing gear. So you have your receiver, your on-off switch, your battery, your electric retracts. And so when you're flying, you just simply move the toggle and the gear goes up and down. So that's actually fairly straightforward. 
Um, the big units behave just like the little the uh, little guys. And I say little in terms of weight. I mean these the small retracts were designed for an airplane about you know, maybe six pounds. These these guys are designed for about a 13 pound airplane. So that's the, that's the basics of the electric. Now mechanicals rely on a servo Let's see. there it is um, the the uh, servo okay There's that Now the same toggle switch that I did for this servo arm right here, it just it just it, it rotates 180 degrees. Now a retract servo is a unique animal because it only does 180. There's no there's no there's no proportional to it. And I don't, uh, these push rods right here come to the servo that's sitting right there. So sometimes these, these rods get in the way of your other units. And that's where the electric retracts come in because you only have this hanging out and then you, you can hide your wire. So, hope that helps. Bye.